The Player is written and directed by Robert Altman and came out in 1992. So The Player is a $50 picture request from my good wholesome friend Mitchie from Australia. Um, I love that guy to death. Uh, he's just been a joy uh, to have as a patron and in, in the Discord chat. $5 a month and you'll get access to the Discord chat. I promise you, you won't regret it. Uh, we have movie nights. We do our bi-weekly blind recommendation and talk about it in the voice chat. Um, it's just a blast. But before I said Mitchie was the only Australian friend I had, but I lied. Um, well, I didn't lie. I just wasn't aware. But um, one of my subscribers and followers, Blake Battersby, He's he's been a longtime supporter of the channel, and he's apparently from Australia too. So I just want to give a shout out to him because I unfairly um, said that Mitchie was my only Australian pal, but that's untrue. Anyway, you didn't click on this video to hear all that. You clicked on this video to hear me talk about the player. So the player is obviously, like I said, a Robert Altman film, and this is the first Altman film that I've ever seen. Um, I've only heard glowing things about Altman as a filmmaker. Um, you know, I've heard a lot of great things about Nashville, a lot of great things about Shortcuts, uh, McCabe and Mrs. Miller, but um, I heard that The Player is an excellent place to start. Um, Perry, for, if y'all watch the Criterion Hall videos, and some other reviews that we have for the more newer releases, uh, Perry told me that The Player is a great place to start. So I was really happy that Mitchie, out of all the Altman films that, that he wanted me to watch, he wanted me to watch The Player. And um, just to cut right to the chase, this is a film that I liked, but I wasn't that huge on it. And I think at this point, that's kind of a hot take because most people really love this film. And... I admire it, to be honest with you. I definitely admire and appreciate the fact that this film exists and I really appreciate its overall artistic approach because this is a very like self-aware, meta, and satirical film. And it's also very comedic in tone. And I did appreciate that aspect of the film. Um, I don't think all of it worked incredibly well but it was really cool to see a film um, tackle the Hollywood bubble in this kind of self-aware and meta type of way. Um, other films after this, like Adaptation, also tackled it. And I, I love that film to death. I obviously like it better than this film. But it's really interesting to see a film like this um, you know, a whole decade before that film came out, um, trying to tackle something in a similar way. Uh, Barton Fink also came out before this film, and it kind of gave me some of those vibes as well, even though they, they're films with totally different goals. Um, but they're, again, like all, like all three of these films, like Adaptation, Barton Fink, and The Player, um, they're all films that kind of satirize the film industry in a way. Um, but anyway, so the things that I really liked about the player, um, honestly, I think the direction is the most impressive aspect of this film. And I, I, I can honestly say that the direction is damn near flawless in this film. Um, and it makes me really excited to check out more of Altman's films because, uh, he didn't write the screenplay to this film, even though I do think the screenplay is good. Um, I didn't think it was as fantastic as I think most people think it is, but I'm really interested to see an Altman film that he both wrote and directed, um, just because the direction in this film is honestly pretty incredible. Um, the opening sequence to this film um, kind of blew me away, and I thought after that opening sequence, I was going to fall in love with this film. Um, unfortunately, that wasn't the case, but... I still think that opening sequence is worth mentioning because um, it's basically like this this eight minute long take, um, this eight minute one shot sequence that you know is obviously choreographed with delicacy because 
it just captures so many characters moving in and out of frame um, and being focused on and at the same time having that very meta and self-aware dialogue like there's a character that like halfway through this long take he mentions long takes and um again it's like just one of those really clever moments that when you're watching you're like that's that's kind of brilliant um and again just like the again the, the entire sequence is really impressive because there's a lot of things going on um there's moments where they're obviously making fun of Hollywood and how they're running out of any kind of original ideas because Tim Robbins character he's the main character of the film he's a Hollywood producer and his job is to basically uh, hear pitches all day from you know these screenwriters and you know these screenwriters come up with the most absurd ideas one example was a pitch for The Graduate 2 and again it's just it's making fun of how Hollywood just will shit out sequels to any kind of film. It doesn't matter what film it is. And even though The Graduate 2 sounds like a dumb idea that would never happen, um, don't underestimate Hollywood. They will come out with some of the most absurd sequels and reboots, uh, you know, because all they see is dollar signs and they really don't care about artistic merit. Um, and again, I think that's one of, like, one of the themes of the film. I mean, this film has many different themes um, revolving around criticizing this kind of Hollywood bubble and how they go about uh, making films because you also like get this one scene where you have a certain character that's kind of reading through all these newspaper headlines and a lot of these are like really you know tragic headlines that have to do with people being murdered or you know be being involved in accidents and um, you know in a really arrogant cynical way this character is basically just kind of like pitching you know film script ideas off of these real tragic events and i love that kind of scene too because it does it does make fun of and reveal this type of uh cynicism of these hollywood elite and these hollywood producers but let me go back to the directing um i kind of went off the rails and went off track i i tend to ramble and go off track when i do this kind of format uh, i promise to be back to the more professional format very soon I got a review for A Brighter Summer Day coming up on the 30th anniversary on Tuesday, so be on the lookout for that. Um, but, yeah, the directing to me, I think, was the most impressive aspect of it. Because of the overall, like, uh, presentation of this film, I thought really helped keep me engaged. Um, because, again, it's the way that the camera flows throughout this film, and and how the camera decides to focus on certain characters because there's scenes where this camera's like slowly moving and you have two characters that are having a conversation and the camera will kind of like slowly move right through them and then start focusing on two other completely different characters and their entire dialogue. And um, the film is kind of presented in that kind of really fluid way and I think that was the aspect of the film that I liked the most. But it's funny because even though I liked the direction of the camera work, um, I thought the cinematography itself was kind of bland. Um, and that's weird. Usually that doesn't happen. Usually if the camera is directed well, I'm usually really impressed with the overall like framing and um, just the overall like beauty of the shots. But that's not really the case. I actually thought not only was the framing not really the most compelling, but it's also just like in terms of color, really bland. Like the the color palette of this film and the overall quality of it kind of reminded me of like a straight to TV soap opera type thing. And not only did the color and the framing of this give me that vibe, but there's lines of dialogue in here especially that has to do with um tim robbins the main character and the uh the the love interest in this film uh first of all i didn't find their dynamic that compelling it's only because both of these characters just as standalone characters aren't that layered or complex um at least in my opinion um i found tim robbins character um to be kind of a boring character and same with same with the love interest 
uh, because they're both like intentionally stereotypical because again this film is basically like a comedic satire type of film and um you know when both of their characters come together i didn't think it really created anything like profound or really interesting unfortunately um because you have like moments in this film where like the kind of romantic dialogue is it's just bad um it, it really is like it's almost like laughably bad like you really can't even help but chuckle at it but again that doesn't mean all the writing's bad i think most of the writing is actually you know fine to good um because what i do like about this film script is that it it's a film that again it's kind of making fun of the type of conventional narrative approach to filmmaking in hollywood um it's very self-aware with it and it usually points out when it's happening um like what they're doing like there's moments where they talk about how a script needs to have that sex scene that type of gratuitous sex scene and then like right after they mention it like the film has a gratuitous sex scene so even though the film is intentionally hitting all of these cliche beats of hollywood narrative filmmaking and script writing um through its meta and satirical approach it's able to create something that's much more fresh and much more original and that is an accomplishment and by the way i can't believe i haven't really touched on this yet but there's a bunch of stars in this film um not that they're all like play any kind of significant character or anything but there's a lot of stars that make these cameo appearances for like a few seconds and even though yeah it can be a little gimmicky i actually liked this aspect of the film because i feel like it gave it a sense of authenticity because it makes it feel like you are actually experiencing the, the hollywood bubble um you know i'm not you know i've never been a part of any of this shit so i wouldn't know if that's actually how it is like if you're just running into you know all these really famous actors all the time but it was really interesting to have all these famous actors uh play themselves in this film even for it's an incredibly short period of time uh because again it just it made it feel again a little bit more genuine and i feel like it does suck you in into this film setting pretty well vincent d'onofrio is also in this film a very young vincent d'onofrio i could you could hardly even recognize him because he's so skinny and we're usually not used to seeing him so skinny but he he's only in the film for a little bit and you know he's he's a crucial part of this film's first act and honestly like when his character was was, was introduced into the film i thought i was going to really really like where this film was going because I thought his character was really interesting and his dynamic, the, the, the dynamic between him and Tim Robbins, I thought was quite compelling and really interesting. But then something happens to his character and we don't, you know, he's no, he's, he's no longer, he's no longer a prominent character in the film. That's all I'll say. And after that point, I feel like the film kind of, again, it started becoming a little bit more one dimensional and less interesting. Um... But again, overall, I do admire this film. I did enjoy this film, and I do like it. Um, as I said, the direction, I think, is fantastic. Um, it's unfortunate that I think the cinematography itself isn't, you know, anything to write home about. But um, I'm glad I watched this film. And even though I wasn't crazy about this film... I am highly looking forward to other Altman films like Nashville, like Shortcuts, like uh, McCabe and Mrs. Miller. I'm going to give The Player a strong 6 out of 10. Can we talk about something other than Hollywood for a change? So which Robert Altman film do you think I should watch next? I'm really curious to hear what everybody thinks. Um, you know, if I wasn't huge on The Player, um, which film do you think... I would enjoy a bit more than this film. Um, let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section about the film and also about what my next Altman film should be. Um, but that's all I got to say about the player, guys. Uh, if you really enjoyed this review, please give it a thumbs up and share it amongst your friends. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel to be updated on more film-related content.